Hello, and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use the APE software. APE is short for A Plasma Editor, and it is commonly used as a nice um, tool that you can use to work with plasmids and design cloning experiments where you can, say, take one piece of DNA from one plasmid and transfer it to another plasmid. Uh, for example, you could take a, a cDNA clone that either you've generated or purchased and clone it into a plasmid of your choice. The thing I like about A Plasma Editor is it's a cheap uh, software, by that I mean it's completely free. Uh, it's also good for uh, Mac users as well as Windows users. Uh, so the first step in order to use Ape, um, is you have to download it. So you have to go to the, the Ape website. You can simply type um, APE into your Google search and it should be one of the first things that comes up. Otherwise you can actually see the web address here located on top. Uh, you'll know you're in the right place because Ape has this kind of a really funny symbol where it's got two uh, sort of a concatenated plasmids with this sort of um, apes swing swing between them. So that's what you do. So first step, you download it, um, and then you open it up, and it looks something like this when you first open it. You can see there's a lot of options up here across the top. Uh, and this area in here is where your sequence is going to go. So in order to do anything, a good first step would be to get some sequence that we want to work with. Um, so what I'd recommend is going online and finding a plasmid that you'd like to to put into the A plasmid editor. So you can start making your changes, start seeing kind of uh, some of the features of that plasmid. Uh, so for example, I'm just going to use this one because uh, I worked with it before. It's it's a plasmid called uh, PCDNA 3.1. Uh, it has a MIC and HIS tag, which is good for purification and also for um, uh, detecting uh, the resulting protein with with antibodies. And it comes in a few different forms. Um, so this particular one is from Life Technologies. Um, it used to be called Invitrogen, but you, you can get plasmids from a lot of different sources uh, when you're searching online. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a lot of information about this plasmid, but the part you're going to want to pay attention to is in this region um, down in here, where it says Vector Information. And there's a few different options here um, that have uh, the tags, I believe, are in different frames in these three plasmids. Um, so you'll have to find the one that works for you. And you notice for each individual one, you'll have several of these things called maps. Um, so if we click on this this first one right here where it says map, it'll open up a new little PDF document. I'm actually going to open it up in a new tab. And you'll get something like this. And depending upon your purpose, this might be all you really need to know. It'll tell you all the features of your plasmid. Uh, it also will kind of spell out the multiple cloning site right in here where you see all the different restriction enzyme sites that are within that region. Uh, and then right in here, uh, it will tell you um, kind of downstream of that, you have your two tags at the end, the MIC epitope and the his tag, uh, and then there's a terminator uh, there at the end. Of course, this all starts with the T7 promoter, uh, but for your particular plasmid, you may have some different features. Other features in this particular plasmid include some uh, resistance markers, for example, ampicillin uh, over here, uh, there's a neomycin uh, resistance over here, um, as well as a few other things, including an origin or replication. Now, if you're interested to know the exact positions of these things, all that information is given just below. Uh, it will probably be like this on most websites you go to, but it may look a little bit different in your case. Uh, for example, here we can see the CMV promoter is from bases 209 to 863. And that's, that's what we can learn from the plasmid maps. We'll come back to here in a second. Let's see what else we can learn. Uh, we also have this thing called the polylinker. This is a zoomed-in version of the multiple cloning site. And it's pretty handy to see exactly how your gene of interest will be cloned into this plasmid. So you can see here is your promoter, T7 promoter priming site. Uh, here's some of the tags at the end, this MIC epitope and his tag. Um, and all these restriction enzymes in between here are restriction enzymes that you could use to um, um, cut a piece of this intervening DNA here and paste in uh, your sequence, sequence of choice. So if you're not familiar with restriction enzymes, they're essentially like, uh, kind of like molecular scissors. Uh, they'll usually cut at one specific spot in the plasmid, although they do have multiple cutters that will cut at multiple spots. Uh, and restriction enzymes will just cut both strands of DNA uh, and separating um, the two parts of the vector backbone. Um, it's usual uh, in the case when cloning to use two separate restriction enzymes that have um, different overhangs. Uh, and if you need to know what that means, you can um, do a quick online search and find that different restriction enzymes will have different different ways of cutting. Uh, but basically what you want to do is use maybe one restriction enzyme up here, another one sort of a little bit further on, uh, and then you'll cut your vector with the exact same two enzymes and that will allow you to put your custom piece of DNA in here in a specific direction. You'll want to go um, 
in a, in a specific orientation. If it goes in backwards, it's not going to be what you want. So you want it to go in forwards. Um, so th this is really kind of a nice little schematic of that feature. Uh, what else do we have? Here we have a restriction map. Uh, where it'll tell you the exact locations of all these restriction enzymes. Usually restriction enzymes like these will have um, a, a name that is usually about three letters long and then it will end with sort of a Roman numeral like one, two, three. The, these letters are short for the organism that those restriction enzymes were originally purified from. You can see here's um, a very common cutter. This one actually cuts this particular vector 69 times, whereas this first one here will only cut the vector a single time at this, this exact position here. Um, I don't usually use this particular screen. It's, it's somewhat useful, but um, if you're using APE, you don't really need it. Uh, the final thing, and perhaps most importantly, is the actual sequence. So if you click on this one here that says sequence right here, uh, this will actually give you, uh, lo and behold, the sequence of your entire plasmid. So I'm going to select it uh, you can manually drag over the entire thing, or you could simply hit Control A um, and then Control C. By the way, Control A will will select everything, and Control C will copy everything. Uh, once you have that copied, you can paste it right into Ape, and I'm going to paste it by hitting Control V. Um, there are a few uh, unallowed characters, but if I just say yes, it will ignore those, uh, and lo and behold, my sequence is now in here. If I wanted to, I also could have gone to edit and said paste from up here too. It's, it's just as easy if that's what you're used to. Now currently this DNA sequence is listed as being linear. So I'm going to hit this button right here at the top where it says linear and then it's going to change it to a circular vector. And now if I want to see what this looks like, I can go to um, under enzymes, you can see what's called the graphic map. And If I click on that, um, you can see uh, a map of the plasmid. And now I actually have some restriction enzymes selected. So all of these things on the outside are the names of particular restriction enzymes, and the number after them, that one, indicates they all cut the plasmid a single time. Uh, this is usually what you want to look for, is these unique cutters. You also could get the same map if you go to enzymes, graphic map plus U, and that, that is essentially showing you the unique cutters. Uh, if you wanted to pick different restriction enzymes or a custom set of restriction enzymes, you can go up to enzymes, go to enzyme selector, choose anything that you want. Um, remember, the number right after the restriction enzyme tells you how many times it will cut your plasmid. For example, this FSE1 cuts zero times, and this MAE2 cuts 16 times. So typically those single cutters are the ones you want. So I'm just going to stick with that. Um, what else? If we go back to our map, let's go back to a graphic map, uh, where do you suppose the multiple cloning site is on this particular plasmid? That's right. It's going to be right over here where you see all these different cut sites in this very um, short limited region over here. And if you remember from when we were looking at our, our map, these are some of the same enzymes that we saw earlier. So if you're not sure, you can find it that way. One thing you will notice is that there's absolutely nothing else labeled on this on the circular piece of DNA. It's essentially a line, and we have our multiple cloning site here. Uh, let's try to change that. If we want to know, if we want to add some of the actual features, say the promoters um, on this factor onto this plasmid, uh, we simply have to go back um, to the website, uh, and we're going to go back to here where it says map. Click that, and remember on the bottom where it gave these specific locations. For example, the uh, T7 promoter. Let's add that one. It says it is um, it spans the bases 863 to 882. So we'll go back to our DNA, and we'll say edit, and we'll say select from, which if you look is kind of down here towards the middle. It has sort of a little arrow pointing at a target region, and this allows you to put in very specific bases. So we're going to go back just to make sure we got this right. 863 to 882, 863. 882, say OK. That there is our T7 promoter. I'm going to right click on it, and then you see there's a lot of different options I could do here, but we're going to want to pick the one that says new feature, and we're going to just type in T7 promoter, and you could change the color if you want. I think that's currently fine. Hit OK, and now it's colored. And if we go back to our map, you can see this little um, blue thing here is our T7 promoter. It's now position on our map. So I'm not going to do it for the demo purposes, but if you wanted to, you could go through and add all of these to your map to get a very accurate depiction of this plasmid. If you're going to be working with a plasmid for a long time, uh, or if you really want a good picture of what's on there, it's a really good thing to do. 
Um, it, it takes a little bit of time to enter these in. It's slightly tedious, but in many cases it can be well worth it um, to just to get a really nice picture of what's going on. Um, close that window there. Uh, so what else can we tell you about? So we talked a little bit about labeling these parts. Um, and that's one thing that you'll probably want to do. It'll take you some time. and We're not going to do it all today. Uh, but after you have those parts labeled, what you're going to want to do is actually insert um, your uh, DNA of interest into your plasmid. Typically, plasmids come essentially, um, I, I like to call them empty plasmids if they don't contain anything except just what came with the plasmid. Um, and what we're going to want to do is actually use this multiple cloning region here um, to clone in our specific um, sequence of choice. And one thing that might help if we say highlight um, I went to enzymes clicked highlight this is actually gonna highlight the specific enzymes um, and actually it's not highlighting the enzymes themselves but it's highlighting the restriction enzyme cutting sites so if I select over this um, you can see up here sort of towards the top uh, under where it says circular it's gonna say hind 3 and it'll tell you exactly where the cut site is gonna be for this enzyme likewise this is BAM H1 this is eco R1, this is eco R5, etc., etc. And you can get um, several several different cut sites. What you're going to want to do is to find your clone of interest and find out what cut sites it is flanked by. If you go online and you purchase a custom cDNA, um, that custom cDNA will come in a plasmid, and that will have a map very similar to this one. And your, C your DNA sequence will be surrounded by different cut sites. So you'll want to cut once on either side and then paste it into this vector, uh, making sure things are in the correct frame. If you want a tag on the end, you're going to want to make sure that that tag gets expressed in the proper frame, um, as uh, the, the same frame as your gene. Um, likewise, if you are just are you're getting your own DNA, you're not purchasing it, but say you're maybe you're doing some RT-PCR, uh, you oftentimes will do what's called tailed PCR, which will allow you to put um, custom restriction enzyme sites on the ends um, of your your um, cDNA sequence. You can have any restriction sites on the ends you want. For example, I might just choose that it's convenient to have um, a BAMH1 site and an ecor one site. I could clone right in between these two, two right there. So that's essentially kind of roughly how you want to go about doing it. There's a little bit more to it than that, but I think for the purposes of this quick demonstration, that essentially tells you the basics of how to use uh, APE. Uh, if you want to know any more about how to use APE, you can go onto the APE website, and there are a lot of helpful inf uh, pieces of information on this website that tell you some of the other things that it can do and describe a little bit more um, about how to do it. So, for example, here's an APE wiki site. If you have comments or questions, um, there's a whole lot of answers about um, how to do various things here. So, um, that is our brief tutorial of APE. I hope that you found it informative. Uh, and depending on your purpose, you may or may not have to use it, but certainly uh, I find it uh, very helpful for, for cloning experiments. So uh, happy cloning.